What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna be talking about chest tube drainage systems. We're not gonna be talking about the tubes themselves. We're gonna be talking about the drainage systems that they are hooked up to. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said, chest tube drainage systems is the topic for today. Before we jump into that, do me a favor, respiratorycoach.com, your resource for uh, materials you're looking for to aid you in passing the TMC and the CSC exams on the first attempt. If you will, go check that out. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, as far as chest drainage system goes, let's just give you an example of one type of maybe practice test question that you may come across. While assessing a patient in an ICU, you observe bubbles in the water seal chamber of the chest drainage system. What does this indicate? Now we've got answers there. We're going to come back to this question in just a second, but let's first of all break down the three chamber system. Now Egan's talks about the three chamber system. Uh, this is the um, 13th edition, chapter 27, page 5. 552 and it starts off by saying three bottle systems are now integrated into commercially available chest drainage systems that house each bottle component in a compact system so what you're thinking here is is look I've never seen a three bottle system like this set up in the hospital setting and by chance you haven't uh, most likely you haven't but you have worked with different commercially available systems that are connected to um, that whether you know it or not, all operate off of these principles of the three bottle drainage system. So we're gonna break that down and uh, show you what is important and uh, what you can uh, do with this information when you see these exam questions, uh, either on your MBRC exams or maybe even at the bedside. I mean, imagine, imagine, just imagine uh, an RT that um, is taking care of people with pulmonary disorders and uh, we, have an understanding of what is happening in this system when somebody has a chest tube. Now, why would somebody have a chest tube? Well, there's two primary reasons. Either one, to evacuate uh, fluid or pus from the pleural space or to evacuate air. So what we know is in general, we're thinking about things like a pleural effusion, a hemothorax, maybe a chylothorax, maybe an empyema, uh, or maybe a pneumothorax. Okay, and so um, we know that those are really the disease processes that we're talking about here when utilizing these drainage systems as well as post cardiac uh, surgeries who have uh, chest tubes uh, post operatively. And so when you look at the system, the first thing to do is you have to orient yourself to the patient. And so what we see here is that uh, our patient's lungs are over here. Okay, and so this is the first bottle in the system. Now the first bottle is called the collection chamber. Okay, now the collection chamber is where any fluid, pus, or solid material as it is drained out of the pleural space will fall down and capture and collect in the collection chamber. Now the second chamber we see here is the water seal chamber. This chamber is very, very important because it is the chamber that creates a barrier from the tube that's connected to our pleural system or, or in, inside of our, our pleural cavity. It creates a seal to atmosphere so that you, it makes sense, right? You couldn't put a chest tube into a patient and just leave it open because when a diaphragm drops, air would get sucked into the pleural space. You would basically be creating an open pneumothorax. And so there has to be some type of seal on the backside of the tube or the system itself that prevents air from coming and being drawn back into the pleural space. And that's the purpose of the water seal chamber. Now again, page 552 out of Egan's, the water seal is set at the two centimeter mark, which means this tube here comes down and it should be submerged about two centimeters. Now when that happens, you see where now, the tube that is in your patient's pleural system, or I keep saying pleural system, inside the pleural cavity is now connected to this entire system. But the system becomes closed right here. And so you might also in this, in this chamber, the water seal chamber, as the patient is breathing, the diaphragm is contracting, pressure here becomes negative, you might see this water draw up a little bit and then on exhalation, it may push down a little bit. 
or if you're on positive pressure ventilation during the inspiratory phase pressure is increased intrathoracically so it may get pushed down on inspiration and return back up on exhalation all i'm telling you is that the water seal chamber when you see this move this fluid moving back and forth in a titling fashion it is it is representative of intrathoracic pressure changes the the the, the changing pressure in the pleural space for which the system is connected to, that's what yields this movement in that uh, water seal chamber. Okay, now we're going to talk more about the water seal chamber here in just a second. But before we get there, let's talk about the third bottle or the third chamber. And that is the suction control chamber. Now the suction control chamber also uh, has water in it. The water here is going to be much higher. And what we're looking for here is to submerge this vent to, basically vents to atmosphere, about 20 centimeters. So we got two centimeters here, we got 20 centimeters here, and then we connect it to wall suction. Now, it's very important that we don't provide too much suction to the pleural space. That's the purpose of the suction control chamber is if you have your wall suction set on say negative 60 or negative 75 uh, centimeters of water pressure this vent tube right here is going to down regulate it to about negative 20 centimeters of water pressure which again here in uh in egan's uh generally the suction control component is set at negative 20 centimeters of water pressure and so that's about what we want to provide the suction to our patient's pleural space. Now, once we have this happening, what we know is that we have two chambers now with water in them, okay? So if I clean this up just a hair, draw our water seal back right here. I want you to think about something here. If fluid is coming out, it's going to drip, drip, it's going to drop here, and it's going to collect in this chamber here. So this is our fluid, this is our collection chamber, as we've already stated. But what if air is coming out of the system? What if there's a, a, a pneumothorax, a, a pulmonary leak, a, a bronchopleural fistula, something like that that's causing a lot of air to come out? The air doesn't drop down. The air is going to be pulled through the system. So the air goes all the way back over here. And then what do we know happens when air moves through fluid. You see, the air is going to keep going. It's going to come all the way out here. What happens when that air is pulled through that water seal, that, 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 that water that's there to create the seal? What we know is we're going to get bubbles. Anytime air runs through, goes through water, it makes bubbles. We've all done this before um, with uh, either water or chocolate milk as a kid. You take your straw and you blow in it and you get bubbles. We all know this. And so bubbles in the water seal chamber are very, very important because they are indicative of an air leak, an active air leak. We say, okay, that uh, makes sense. You have to ask yourself, where is that air coming from? And it is coming from somewhere within the system. Now, if all your connections are tight and you don't have a break in this anywhere, which let's hopefully you don't, then the only place this air can be coming from is your pleural cavity. And if your pleural cavity has air in it that is coming out, then that's what we know to be a pneumothorax. And so bubbles in this chamber are very, very important to us in knowing what... Um, in, in monitoring our patients with a pneumothorax. If you have a patient uh, in, with an active pneumothorax and you've got bubbles in the chamber and you increase the peep and the bubbles get worse or, or, or increase, then perhaps your change in vent settings has made the air leak worse. You see, maybe you have a patient who comes in with a pneumothorax and you've got bubbles in the water seal and two days later you notice that, um, that the bubbles uh, have been decreasing over the past 48 hours and on two or day two or three the bubbles are completely gone. You see, this might indicate that now the pneumothorax is resolved because there's no air coming out of or no air, no visible bubbles in the water seal. So, Clearly, there's no air coming from the pleural space. Now, there can be other complications like kink tubings and misplaced um, uh, uh, thoracotomy to thoracostomy tubes and things like that. But just in general, just think about the theory. No bubbles means no air. Bubbles means air. 
Okay, now this is where it gets a little tricky, which you have to remember about your three bottle system or your three chamber system is that because we have this suction over here at the wall set higher than the, 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 the um, submerging, submergement of this tube right here, then what we know is that we will also have bubbles in this chamber. Okay, now it's important to note that these bubbles are not coming from the same place that these bubbles are coming from. These bubbles are coming from atmospheric air being pulled in to downregulate the suction that's being applied to the pearl space. That's what that's coming from. And so these bubbles are completely normal. They should be there. If you have a three chamber system and you're hooked uh, to suction and you don't see bubbles in your suction control chamber, then what, what, there's not enough suction being applied. You have an insufficient amount of suction because they are normal and they should be there. So that's kind of the big take home message for this video here is when are bubbles normal and not normal? They are normal in the suction control chamber. They are abnormal in the water seal chamber unless we know we are treating a pneumothorax. And I don't like to use the word abnormal here um, because if you have a pneumothorax, an active pneumothorax, you should see bubbles here. And if you don't, then perhaps there is something wrong with your system or your setup. So I don't really like to use the word abnormal, but just know that bubbles here, air, air leak is present, okay? And so um, that's how the three chamber system works. Very, very brief. You can dive much further into this. Uh, you can talk about the one bottle system, the two bottle system. Maybe we'll do that in a future video. But for now, I just want you to have a good understanding, primarily for the reason of as respiratory therapists standing at the bedside, we are there to take care of people with pulmonary problems, pleural effusion, hemothorax, pneumothorax, empyema, all of those things affect the pulmonary system. This is an aspect that you should be able to answer on the test as well as troubleshoot and have input on at the bedside. So um, that's the three chamber system. Let's go back to our practice exam question because I think we all know the answer now. While assessing a patient in an ICU, you observe bubbles in the water seal chamber. This is the most important part of, no cancel, don't end. This is the most important part of this scenario is you see bubbles where in the water seal. That's the, an that's the information you need to answer this question. You go down here, answer number one, presence of an air leak. That sounds like the right answer. I'm gonna go with that one, but let's just read the other questions. Resolution of a pneumothorax. Now remember, if you have a pneumothorax that is resolved, your bubbles are gonna go away. It's, they're not going to appear. They're going to go away. So it's not resolution because we observe bubbles in the water seal. So resolution is not the answer. Pleural effusion will cause a collection of fluid, but not bubbles in the water seal. And then insufficient suction pressure. This is an incorrect answer, but it is one that if you know just a little bit about chest tubes and chest drainage systems, it could trick you because you're thinking, wait, there's supposed to be bubbles in the water seal, there, or there's supposed to be bubbles in the suction control chamber, and you miss the water seal, then you may come down here and go, oh, it has something to do with the suction chamber, and you choose that one. That's the wrong answer. Insufficient suction will cause there to be an absence of bubbles in the suction chamber. And remember, we want bubbles in the suction chamber, the suction control chamber, because that indicates normal functioning. Okay, and so uh, it's not D. The answer here is 100%. We have the presence of an air leak. And that is the three chamber uh, chest drainage system. Quick, brief overview. Uh, stay right here with me on YouTube, uh, at Respiratory Coach. Do me a favor, hit the like, comment, share it with all your friends. Um, and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Instagram at Respiratory Coach, TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. Come check me out on LinkedIn. A lot of good professional networking happening over there. And then don't forget about uh, passing the TMC and the CSE with the TMC and CSE boot camps. You can find both of them and learn more at respiratorycoach.com. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.